I think the pork cheek is cooked beautifully. It's just melt in your mouth. It's sticky with the glaze. The freshness of the crab works really nicely with this pork cheek. And the lobster with the lardo, I love it. Really tasty, really tasty. Ollie's spaghetti bolognese inspired dessert is a tomato bavoie, a set whipped cream flavored with honey and tomato juice and filled with tomato jam sitting on a shortbread biscuit and dusted with tomato sherbet, with compressed strawberries, sweet Sicily curd and a lovage jelly, puffed pepper noodles and a tomato and lovage granita. Ollie, I really like the craziness of your presentation, you know, because you get served that and you're like, wow, what am I going to experience here? Holly, when you spoke about your idea today, your spaghetti bolognese, I thought, really? Now that I've tasted the dessert, I think the dish is excellent. I do. I think it's smart, it's different, it's intriguing. This granita is delicious. You've got the perfect balance of tomato, sweet, herbs running through it, the lovage on the plate, the crunch of the biscuit, the beautiful idea of the pepper spaghetti sitting on top. It's fascinating for me. It's excellent. Every mouthful starts off like it's going to be savoury and then very quickly becomes an absolutely exquisite dessert with heady flavours of strawberry. I've got the honey that keeps on dancing across my tongue. I believe this to be a work of real genius. Real, real genius. Using the inspiration of spaghetti bolognese to make a dessert. You not a it's great, don't change, it works. I've been waiting for feedback like that for a while. I feel like I've just sort of been just under the line. Um, so yeah, to just creep above it and get, get such good feedback, yeah, absolutely made up. Matthew's surf and turf dish, inspired by his first visit to a Michelin starred restaurant with his mum, is braised Iberico pork cheek, sitting on roasted fennel infused with dill oil and topped with julienne of apple. Lobster tail covered with lardo, a fennel salad, crab salad, and a pork stock aroma. <laughs> Finished with a lobster bisque and dill oil. Wow, well done. I think the pork cheek is cooked beautifully. It's just melt in your mouth. It's sticky with the glaze. The freshness of the crab works really nicely with this pork cheek. And the lobster with the lardo, I love it. Really tasty, really tasty. Mate, you rock. I mean, that is just awesome. I love that bisque. And that herb oil is slightly aniseed and then you've got little bits of fresh apple, and then you've got a little bit of citrus running through the crab, and the crab is salty. It's just delicious. I love the roasting of the fennel, the oil, the dill. It's an undercurrent of aniseed that just keeps coming back time and time again. I love the pork fat on top of the lobster that works really well. Another good dish from you. In fact, it's a very good dish from you. Thank you very much. My Thank pleasure. You. I still remain unconvinced over surf and turf, but nothing in the world would stop me from completely and utterly devouring all of this dish. So you're convinced, then? So you are convinced. All right, OK, all right, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling amazing. I'm so happy that they enjoyed it. It's a great comment. Thanks. Come on. To fall into the top two is very small margins. So I'm still very nervous, but I'm happy. I've done everything I can. Michelle's dish is based on the memory of her grandmother's fruitcake. She's made a muscovado and ginger sponge with cinnamon meringues, cherries poached in cherry brandy and filled with cherry gel, a cherry puree, cherry glass tweel, rum-soaked raisins and a raisin puree with a cinnamon oil aroma. 
Way! <laughs> and a rum and raisin ice cream. What happened to the ice cream? When I put it in the ice cream machine, um, it wasn't churning fast enough, so I put it into the, the chiller. So it didn't set. The lightness of the sponge is absolutely delicious. The cherries, the freshness, love the cherry puree, love the little meringue on the plate as well. There's a lot about this dessert I really do like. But your rum and raisin ice cream, it hasn't set, unfortunately. The cake is delicious. You can taste the spices, the ginger and, and the cinnamon. The rum and raisin ice cream, I'm disappointed it hasn't set, but it is delicious. You've got a huge hit of rum. And if you take a little bit and you try it with this raisin puree and a little bit of the cake, it's a great tasting dessert. Thank you. Cherry, ginger, rum and raisin are a great idea. But you know yourself, this is not how you wanted your ice cream to be. Feeling OK. Ice cream didn't go to plan. Still got good comments, so I'm focusing on those to keep me happy. Inspired by the flavours of the South African dish, Baburti, Sean has served rack of pork and pork belly, a curried apricot puree, almond milk gel, fresh apricot, dried fruit sourdough toast and almond granola, black curry powder and a pork jus. Sean, if that's the national dish of South Africa, then that's where I'm going on holiday. I think it's absolutely delicious. The touch of fruit in this dish, the apricot, is just balanced beautifully well. And I really love the granola flavour, the textures of it, once it all gets mixed up with that delicious sauce. I just love this dish. I think it's great. The almond puree is lovely because it just gives everything a lovely, creamy texture and creamy flavour. I love the cutlets. I don't particularly like this belly. There's too much fat in here. I'm chewing this and I don't like it. The pork cutlet with the crackling, still crunchy on there, is delicious. The apricots bring me a sharpness to the plate. And what I think is really clever is using the, the curry powder as a seasoning. It brings a point of difference to it. Really tasty, really tasty. Yeah, that was great. This dish is very personal to me and, and my family. To get that feedback, amazing. 